Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to the Second Life MOOC on WizIQ. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and I'm going to be uh, moderating for our speaker who is here with us. I can see. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add, like where you are, how you're doing, how you're feeling, something interesting that happened today on the way to wherever you were going. So uh, I'm going to uh, pass on the mic here to uh, some of the other organizers. Uh, let's see who's here. Is Nancy here? I think I saw you, but you didn't come in with your with your co-presenter. Oh my gosh. All right, so we don't have co-presenters in here. We only have a me. Ooh. All right, so uh, KY. Is that Kip? No. No, no, you're not. The co-presenter link uh, is listed for everyone. All right. Okay, so let me pass on the mic to you. It's just as good, but... Um, okay, let me see if I can do that and pass on. All right, there you are. And we see you! Hooray! Hi. Hooray! Hooray! Boy, was I anxious. I'm so glad to see you! <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. All right, so we see Kip. You don't know why I'm so happy, but uh, Kip knows. <laughs> yeah, I see you. <laughs> All right, because I was away when you were uh, texting, when you were connecting uh, with me, and I thought, oh, I got to get home. I got to get this fixed. <laughs> So I'm so happy you took care of it. I love the frame that you're Me in. Too. It looks great. All right. So do you have a headset? Um, because I do. Should I put it on? Um, yes, that would be great. Just one of these uh, little uh, ear. Oh, okay. Nancy came in. Thank you, Nancy. You came in as a co-presenter. Yay. All right, WizIQ is going through a lot of changes, by the way. Hi, Nancy. A lot of changes that are amazing. So uh, this is uh, probably uh, going to happen really soon, uh, middle of April, I think, uh, next week. We should be seeing some changes. And the co-presenter is one of the changes. Uh, things go slowly. And uh, Kip, I think we're ready for you. Are we going anywhere? If we are, if you could just, uh, as we go... Uh, I see we've got, oh, okay, uh, as we go, uh, don't forget to add the slurl or where you'd like us to go so we can go mm -hmm. there. And I see you're uploading some things right now, a PDF. Okay, that's, that's right, fine. Yeah. A few PDFs. Mm -hmm. Two of them. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. So. I've actually got um, eight in total or nine in total. So if I can just do that real quick. That yeah, that's great. fine. I think they're coming. They're probably very, very small because, I mean, they're not too large because they seem to be coming really fast. Unless you've got a super okay. motor there. Um, right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It's better to do it through the library. I'll just uh, yeah. let, them, yeah. let them upload. Okay, that's uh, fine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's perfect. I think that... Uh, I don't know if people see this, but I want... Yeah, they'll be... Uh, we'll see this. Um, this is the collage. I'm not sure if this is the last one. But I keep, and I really like doing this, believe it or not, I enjoy adding uh, new faces to the collage. So we're getting, uh, we got some new presenters, um, many Spanish-speaking presenters, uh, which I think is really great um, for those. Uh, nice. Yes, I don't know. Kip, do you know Spanish? Un poquito. Un poquito. Un poquito. Okay, that sounds more than I know. Um, <laughs> sí. <laughs> so it's really exciting. I, I, think, I think the Spanish community or people from Spanish speaking countries seem to be really involved in uh, virtual worlds from what I can see. So uh, I mm. wonder, I wonder if this is something uh, that's happening or it just seems like it is. Okay, so Nancy, that's not fair. Your husband speaks Spanish. So you've got. Um, something over all of us. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, so, we're going to have some Spanish speaking presentations, but we'll have translations. Um, so, that shouldn't be a problem. And I think it's really great to be able to do things in different languages. Kip, maybe you'd like to do something in German at some point. That would be nice too. Can we make it? Okay, problem. great. I understand just about any language, but I don't, I only speak English, French, Hungarian. And that's it. And Latin, a little. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so feel free, people are coming in, feel free to add to the chat box um, anything you'd like to add. Um, the chat box is really important here in the WizIQ chat room, as well as um, in virtual world, Second Life, and so on, because it really um, uh, helps connect. I think it uh, actually contributes to people getting closer and closer to one another through um, textual writing. I think um, that's one of the reasons why people do connect and um, stay in contact because of the um, texting. I don't know if you found that true, Kip. But I've met a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. I, I totally yeah, agree. have you met a lot of friends uh, through texting, through chats, and virtual worlds? And yeah. absolutely, yes, on Facebook and also in Second Life, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about Facebook. If I made any close, mm -hmm. you have you made friends on Facebook? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I've made some people, but I think most of the people I know actually are, are from yeah. Second Life that I then know via then uh, later uh, via yeah, Facebook. Yeah, that's what I think too. I wonder if anybody actually meets. Well, you know, it could be. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, so uh, we can get started, Kip. I think everything's up there, or maybe not. I Super. see two. Is yeah. that it? Okay, mm -hmm. great. So um, I, I, I'll keep uploading uh, PDFs as, as sure. we go along because I've only uploaded No problem. Two so far. You know, yeah. I, th I think what's great about technology is that we, we don't have to be formal and we don't have to mm -hmm. pretend that things are perfect or we have to be perfect. We can just be who we are, um, you know. Right. So I, I'm fine with it. it In real. fact, I enjoy it. Thank you. Right. Okay, right. so go ahead. I'll just Great. take myself off. Unless Nancy. Okay, super. Yeah, Nancy, would you like to say anything? Mm -hmm. Nancy or Doris, would you like? Doris, I see your mic is open. Nancy, I believe yours is too. So, oh, you don't have a mic. Oh, yes, you do. Okay, so feel free if you want to jump in and say anything. If this is not a one person. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Doris? I don't know. Me escuchas? Me escuchas? Mm -hmm. Sí. All I'm going to say is besitos, Kip, and welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Very kind. Great. Well, it's nice to be here. I think I'll start with the usual question, although I think Nelly might have already asked. Uh, I'm always curious to know where people are from, so if I can just start with the first question. Uh, where is everybody from? Can you tell me which country? Um, that would be nice. So where you are currently at at the moment. Wow, Mexico, Ecuador, UK, Venezuela, Argentina, Romania. Okay, fantastic. Spain, of course. Tuanyan is here again. Nice. Nice to see you. Germany, yes. Poland. Wow. Okay. Okay, and I'm curious how many people are actually in the room uh, at the moment. I know we had quite a few people that, that had signed up, uh, but maybe Nelly can tell us that later. Um, I think 700 and something people had actually uh, signed up for, for this, so I'm really curious how many people we're actually reaching today. Um, good, let's see. Uh, maybe another question, a quick question just to get to know you a little bit. Um, let me ask you this question. Okay. So who is new to Verdlantis? Who does not know anything about Verdlantis? Just out of curiosity. Just give me a me if you don't know, uh, if you're new to Verdlantis. Okay. Except for the first talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps a related question. Uh, who is new to Second Life or virtual wor world learning or, or learning a language in, in, in a virtual world? It doesn't have to be Second Life, but um, who is totally new to the idea of learning a language in a virtual world? Okay. Okay. Well, we're actually going to get into quite a bit of uh, detail today. And I, I'm going to, I've really got quite a bit of content, way too much, but uh, what I'm planning to do is, is to throw this at you and to have you choose. The, I have a, a, a wide um, variety of uh, discussion points, basically pros and cons of teaching in a virtual world, uh, specifically Second Life, but uh, these points I think apply to other virtual worlds as well, for example, OpenSim, um, OpenSim-related uh, virtual worlds, Avenation, um, and so on. Uh, I'll just throw them at you. And my plan is to basically um, see see which ones you might be interested in discussing, 
Uh, but before I do that, I'll very quickly just give you some information about myself. I, I don't want this uh, uh, to be too drawn out, but uh, I'll just give you a link if you want any biographical information. That's who I am. Um, just briefly to tell you something about Verglantis, uh, we basically have been active in Second Life since about 2006, late 2006. Uh, we've had a variety of uh, names over the years, so early on we were known as ESL and Second Life, later Second Life English, and now um, the name is Verglantis. Um, uh, probably, I think, I think the name change came about um, uh, primarily because we didn't want to, to just focus on English. Um, and I was uh, working on a digital storytelling platform at the time, um, and so that's where the name came from. It's, it's also wordplay, just to give you a little bit more detail. Um, so Verglantis uh, is, uh, is made up of these words here. So you have virtual, uh, you have uh, uh, virtue, uh, and then you have Atlantis. Uh, so the idea of something rising, uh, something new, something different. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll let it be a little bit of a mystery to you. But um, the idea is basically to bring people together, uh, very simple for language learning, and to increase uh, intercultural understanding. And um, we do this in a very informal way, just like Nelly uh, mentioned at the beginning about uh, WizIQ being, being an informal uh, medium or platform. Uh, Second Life also uh, provides for this, arguably. And um, so the goal really is to make people relax or to help people relax. And we do this in a variety of ways. Uh, the environment uh, in these virtual worlds is, is already something that tends to be uh, highly relaxing, of course, depending on, on what kind of an environment you create. Uh, but um, long story short, at Atlantis, we really strive to to create an environment which is relaxing, um, and we do that in, in a number of ways. We have a um, the main the main theme of the island is somewhat tropical, uh, so you're surrounded by palm trees. Uh, the weather's always nice. Um, you know, we've got lots of uh, water uh, front views, and um, um, yeah, um, just it's just I guess you could say there's a lot of beauty there, and and you really feel it and sense it um, when you go there. So I invite you all to, uh, to come and visit. Um, let's see. Um, okay, please forgive me if I'm a little bit scattered in my, in my presentation or in our discussion today, because as I said, we have quite a few things that we can get into. I'm going to go ahead and, pa and paste this um, into chat. I may regret this later, but um, I will go ahead and paste this just to give you an idea of what is possible. And actually, it looks like I'm pasting too much. So this will be part one um, of what I'm pasting. Oh, wow. There is, there is a, a paste limit. OK. We'll have to do this little by little. I have to paste to you little, little by little. One second. So we're dealing with pros and cons in, in virtual worlds. Of course, with any platforms, there are pros and cons in terms of uh, affordances. And let me see if I can just show you this in chat. Let's see. So you've got the first few points. We can just start with that. Um, um, let me see here. Uh, I plan to give you the entire list, but I can't do that so easily unless I paste multiple times. Let's see here. Bear with me for a second, please. Sandbox. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to do it in the whiteboard first and then take it piece by pay. piece. Put it on the whiteboard. Do you know how to do the uh, the text? That would There's, if you hover your mouse over Can the I just text, copy paste yeah, there? you'll yeah. see A for text on the left. Like, okay, you'll recognize Perfect. it, I'm sure. And then just click on the whiteboard. Once you click there, you click on the whiteboard, and then you can copy whatever you want into that uh, editor. So I'm looking for A for text. So I'm looking for A for okay, text. Let me, um, let me make sure that you have uh, because I gave you controls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have everything you need. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Okay. Okay. okay I see Just board. stick it in there. I mean, yeah. like, paste it in, and that should work. I see whiteboard, but I don't see oh, A on for the left. text. On uh, the oh, left. there it is. Yes. There it is. Yeah, exactly. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, I can Got see it. you doing it too. Perfect. Okay, there we go. I'm ah, sorry. Perfect. Okay, nice. sorry for not letting you know. Yeah, yeah it's learning to... <laughs> by discovery. No, I apologize. When there's a need, I, yeah, I could have I had a document. But you yeah. know what? When there's a need, <laughs> I just thought I would yeah. be able to throw it in chat. You're fine. Yeah, learning by doing here. You're doing great. <laughs> okay, good. So we have everything thrown up on the whiteboard. Um, as you can see, I'll just scroll down very, very slowly. Um, 
And let me fix this here. Well, let's just start at the top here. Uh, why is Second Life an interesting platform to consider for language learning and teaching? And what we're looking at here at the very top is basically a list of some of the some of the pros. So later come the cons. And if I can involve everybody uh, in this, because as you can see, there's quite a bit to choose from. I'd like for you to look at this list and and let me know what you are interested in discussing. Wow. And if you can't think of anything, it's okay. If, you, if you're not sure what you want to talk about, I can go ahead and start uh, going through the list. But um, I doubt we could make it through the entire list. So ideally, uh, everybody in chat would help me out a little bit. Okay, let me see. Too much, says Tom. Yeah, I know. Too much, yeah. says Tom. Yeah, I know. I know. There's, there's quite a bit there. Yeah, multinational I sounds like good. Okay, decks. great. I okay, like let's start there. Okay, let's, let's start with multinational. Okay, let's let's start with multinational, and then we'll go to holidays from there. Multinational, basically, um, uh, just like we have here, we have people from various nations. Um, one fantastic thing about about being in a virtual world is that not only do you have the ability to connect with people from uh, from from various countries, but you have the ability to do this in a very personal. Um, and an immersive way. So with the avatar, this gives you the feeling that you really are uh, close to, to, to the person that you are uh, interacting with. So there's some proximity uh, due to the immersion. Um, uh, most of our activities have on average uh, between, I would say, eight, eight to nine participants. And those uh, people tend to be uh, from, from different countries, every single one of them. So we tend to have really, uh, on average, between five and, and eight or nine different uh, nationalities represented uh, in, in every activity. Um, so you can imagine having a conversation, for example, on anything, whether it be you know, a, a small talk, so to speak, or a big talk. You can imagine the different um, um, perspectives, the different cultural perspectives rep rep represented uh, because of um, uh, people being from all over the world. Um, uh, the ability to hear different accents, of course, is, is fantastic, which is another uh, another uh, pro that's mentioned uh, in this in this list. Um, so yeah, um, so, yeah um, let me know if I haven't uh, covered that point for you. Um, I'll go on to to Holodex just to keep keep going through this list. Um, Holodex are basically a tool which allow you to to change the environment very quickly, um, and um, so you can basically. Um, uh, for example, you, you could be in a, in a classroom um, environment, and if you decide to that you that you want to be in a conference room, uh, something a bit more business-like, uh, you basically with a, with a few clicks of a mouse you can uh, totally transform that environment uh, around you. And this is an affordance that we don't have in first life or, or real life, as, as some people say. Um, we can't do this in the classroom so easily, right? You cannot transform your classroom into a totally different environment. Um, and these holodecks allow you to do that. Um, so, and really, I, I've only mentioned a few examples at the conference room, the classroom. Uh, there are really hundreds of scenes that you can choose from that are already uh, made for you. Um, uh, some of these uh, scenes do have to be purchased. Some of them are free. Um, and there's also the possibility of creating your own environments and also supplementing these environments with additional objects. Um, quiz objects, for example. Um, uh, quest objects and so on. Uh, in addition to, to just changing an environment, um, um, you know, a surrounding environment, environment that's right around you, um, you can also, uh, throughout the entire island, you can potentially um, make appear uh, objects um, instantaneously. So for example, if I were on, on the island with a group of students and I were doing some sort of a quest activity um, and they were walking around the island, um, I could basically uh, make appear uh, different objects uh, almost instantaneously, uh, whether they are quiz-related objects that are that are linked to uh, to a website uh, or or using some kind of a, a script uh, within the virtual world. Um, there are a lot of possibilities, uh, so to speak. Also, uh, for role play, for example, um, uh, you can do different things to add a, a certain kind of um, sp uh, spontaneity uh, to an activity. Uh, I once had an activity where I was, um, yeah, it was a bit of role play, and pirates were involved, and we were on a pirate ship, and um, I was able to to very quickly um, um, have a treasure treasure chest rezzed 
um, on the ship uh, with just a few clicks of a button. And also uh, later I had the, uh, the, the ship catch on fire just for a little bit of a, a surprise effect, uh, so to speak. And that, of course, uh, you know, uh, adds to what you can do in an activity in terms of uh, you know, responding to a situation like that. And, and uh, the, the language, of course, also then changes because of the, the changing circumstances. Uh, but I don't want to focus too much on Holodex. Um, I'll go back to the list uh, and just see um, if there's anything else um, that anyone would like to focus on. We're still in the pros or the advantages of, um, of virtual worlds. Can anybody find another point that you would like to focus on? Uh, feel free to, to put it in chat. Educative congregating, thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, this is, um, for example, coffee housing, uh, 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 Nelly mentioned. Uh, the, the ability to basically uh, meet with like-minded people in, a, in an informal environment, such as a coffee house or uh, a cafe or, or uh, uh, whatever uh, the envir environment might be. Um, a cafe also comes to mind uh, for me because I think when I typed this list up, that's what I was specifically thinking that actually meet in, in, in ca cafe-like environments. And I'm speaking of, of uh, uh, people that are focused on, on education. Um, and of course, you could do this with, with, any, with any group of people with whom you have a common interest, um, not, only, not only educational uh, in, in nature. Um, so that's, that's something that, of course, we can also do in, in real life, but, but not so easily with people from all over the world, right? To have that kind of environment. The environment itself helps, uh, helps to... Um, yeah, lends itself to the informality of, of the conversation uh, that can take place. Okay, how can you teach there? Wow, okay. It's a big question, right? It's, it, it, I think I could pose the same question for, for any traditional classroom. Um, how can you teach in a traditional classroom? Um, uh, well, there are a number of ways, a number of different methodologies. Uh, most of our activities uh, tend to be conversational in nature. Uh, a lot of them are, especially for people who are just getting started, um, we refer to such people, people who offer activities, um, language learning activities, we call them activity organizers, once again, because of the informality of the platform. Uh, we don't refer to anybody as a teacher or anybody as a student because we're not, we don't aim to be a school per se. Um, uh, but um, the, the, for people who are just getting started, uh, stationary activities tend to be very good. So just, just trying to uh, moderate conversation, um, uh, something that I've done, for example, to make it a bit more concrete, I have an activity called Tea Time, uh, which actually will resume next week. If, if anybody's interested in actually um, observing or participating, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, tea Time is basically an activity where we discuss all sorts of activities, uh, sorry, all sorts of uh, conversation topics, uh, small talk and big talk. Um, and uh, basically what I do is very simple. I provide some, some passive uh, correction in the background uh, via chat. I also have some different tools uh, which, which send out chat messages at, um, at, um, so periodically or whenever I want to send them out. For example, to remind people to, be res uh, to keep the conversation respectful and things like that. I have little tools that I can click and send out those messages to everyone in a broadcast-like way. Um, and, and this conversation, uh, this uh, conversational activity is quite simple. The focus is talking uh, with some passive uh, um, um, correction, uh, if desired, um, and that 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 alone can be a type of uh, type of activity. Now, obviously, you can do a lot more in, in virtual worlds. Uh, this is really um, not a good example of how to uh, make you know um, extensive use of of the platform, but it is something that that is. Um, arguably uh, effective in terms of giving people the chance to speak, giving people the chance to hear different accents, uh, and also to, to listen to different perspectives from all over the world um, regarding a number of topics, whatever the topic might be. Um, I'm only glancing at chat uh, from time to time, because if I focus too much, I'll, I'll lose my train of thought. Uh, so once again, um, let me know what you, what you are curious about. Um, What you might have a question about, and we'll we'll keep talking about it, or I will. Mm -hmm. 
what's, what's the next? Uh, Anybody? What's what's the next uh, discussion topic? What would you like to focus on? Did we talk about? Oh, we talked about holodex. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Nellie. No, no. Sorry, Nellie. Uh, I'm looking. Would at you like it, to say something? And I'm thinking of. Uh, it, you've mm -hmm. got identify with avatars. Did you mention that objects and others identifying with the avatar? Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Good. First, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with. Um, actually, I'll come back to Nancy's point. Nancy asked about drive-through assistance. I'll go ahead and deal with uh, with yours, with what you've mentioned, uh, Nelly. Uh, the ability to identify with your avatar. This is uh, something that that people. Uh, I guess it varies from person to person in terms of how people identify identify with their with their avatar. But arguably, for for a lot of people, um, the avatar is really like an extension of self. So when you when you wear your avatar, you can really identify with it in a way, and this might not happen right away. This might take place uh, over time, so it can be a process. Uh, the more that you that you uh, change your avatar to to look, you know, however you want it to look, uh, the more you uh, the more you actually log in and experience doing things with your avatar. Uh, arguably, the, the more connected you become with your avatar, so that it really begins to feel like a like an extension of self. Um, now, this doesn't happen for all people, uh, probably. Some people, uh, for some reason, see it only as a little puppet that they are moving around. Uh, but I personally have, have uh, felt like um, uh, Second Life and, and, and what I call First Life have merged in ways for me. Uh, so when I'm, when I'm logged in with my avatar, I don't see my avatar as something that I am moving around. I see it more as an extension of myself. Yeah. And that's also something that I think uh, is, is worth reminding people of. When, when in these virtual worlds, uh, we are dealing with real people. So behind every avatar, there is a real person. Uh, some people, unfortunately, do not uh, do not remember this or or like to forget. And um, but uh, I think it's important to, to think about this. Um, we're dealing with people with real emotions, with with real you know real life situations. And um, so, in my opinion, when we are interacting with uh, their avatars, we are interacting with extensions of of real life people. Um, Go back to Nancy's question about um, the ESL drive-through. This is not something that we have actually done. Uh, I'm referring to another group, uh, which is called ESL Second Life, and they they offer a kind of yeah drive-through uh, experience. Um, and basically, it, it's an opportunity for people to to go to this location and ask questions anytime they have questions. So I think they have a, a set you know set hours um, in which people can come and ask any question about English. Uh, we've had this. We've had something similar in the past uh, called office hours and uh, different names. You know, where people were basically able to come and, and ask questions. Uh, even tea time, uh, this activity I referred to earlier, um, um, accomplishes this to a certain extent because we always invite people to bring questions um, when they come and to really influence uh, what we end up discussing. Um, so when I when I go in, I don't necessarily go in with it with a set agenda. I might have a few conversation topics. Uh, in mind that we could discuss, but I really try to to draw from the participants and to find out what they want to talk about. And so I always invite people to bring their own uh, conversation topics. Um, but that long story short, that drive-through experience is, is is like that. You can basically go and ask questions whenever you have them. Anything else? Anything else? To keep the conversation going. Ah, oh, there is a question there. Ah, oh, there is a question there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Doris, we can't hear you. Are you talking through Second Life? No, now we oh, hear I'm you. Here. I, I can hear you. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Okay. Speak up. The role of the teacher. Right, right. Right, that's right. That's perhaps somewhat of a, a sensitive topic. Um, a little bit touchy for some people, uh, but I, I see it as a good thing. Um, I purposely put de-evolution with the D in, in parentheses of teacher role, uh, more of a facilitator than ever. I think this is happening not only because of virtual worlds, but because of the internet in general, because of e-learning. Um, we, we are seeing an in increase uh, in informality in terms of uh, teacher, so-called teacher-student uh, uh, interaction. And um, um, I think especially in Second Life or, or in these virtual worlds, because there is a learning curve and because really everybody uh, you know, has, to, has to learn quite a bit 
uh, to 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 even claim that they've mastered the platform to to a certain degree. Um, we, we really all are, are learning together. So we there's a lot of co-learning, uh, so to speak. And because of that co-learning alone, I think it, it doesn't make sense um, for a teacher to come in with the mindset of, I'm the teacher and you are the student, so I'm up here and you are down here. Uh, this doesn't work. Uh, this doesn't work in virtual worlds and arguably doesn't work online anymore. And in my own personal opinion, I think it doesn't work in the traditional classroom. I think it's, uh, it's an antiquated uh, approach uh, that is fast changing because of all of these uh, technologies which lead to an increase in informality. Um, but I think this is especially uh, especially true in virtual worlds, we see this, you know. Uh, uh, when you come in with your avatar, uh, you, um, how should I say, it doesn't matter how you dress, you, you can come in with a suit and tie, or you can come in as a, as a robot or, or whatever. Uh, really, what, what ends up um, getting people to respect you is, is what you then uh, uh, do with the people and how you interact with the people. And, and arguably, um, you know, you can't just come in uh, simply because you have uh, a certain status uh, in, in real life or first life uh, and expect that that status will be recognized in uh, online or, or in a virtual world. But I see this as a positive, uh, I see this as a positive um, to be quite honest. I, I, I think it's, uh, this is something we really emphasize at Verglant is that, is, is that everybody has something to learn and everybody has something to teach. And so we really, you know, we, we open the door to anybody, for example, to offer an activity. You don't have to have a certificate. You don't have to have, have a degree. Um, basically, the idea is that if someone has something to, to offer, if someone is willing to, uh, to spend time with people and try to help uh, people learn a language, then they can come and offer an activity. And then participants can decide whether or not they see that activity as beneficial. Right? So if a participant goes to an activity and decides, OK, this is not for me, then uh, you know, there, there's no money involved. Everything is free. So, so nothing has been lost, really. We've actually had uh, quite a few people who have started off as activity participants. Well, I say quite a few. Well, really, yes, it's definitely true. I think, I think probably the majority of the activity organizers that we have or have had uh, over the years um, have started off as activity participants and then later became activity organizers themselves. Um. I have a question I think that um, we could discuss. Does, uh, I mean, do you want Second Life? You mentioned the classroom and teachers and so on. Would you like Second Life to kind of be like your first life in, in how things go? Would that make most people feel comfortable? Or, you know, are there places where Second Life virtual worlds are completely different and people do not try to force uh, reality into it, but allow things to kind of be um, immersed in, in something, some kind of a fantasy dreamland where everything is completely different from life and, and you try to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think I should be careful not to paint one, one very simplistic uh, picture about, you know, about what it's like, you know, to teach uh, or, or to learn in, in, in Second Life. Um, for example, formality can also be experienced. Uh, you can go to lectures or presentations where you see a similar kind of formality. You have the, um, yeah, to use, to use the word that everybody knows, the sage on the stage or, or, the, or the presenter um, uh, 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 in front of a large group and then interacting with the group in a very similar way, arguably, to, to what happens uh, in, in first life. Uh, but then you also have, um, as you mentioned, Nella, you have uh, environments where informality is is largely, uh, or is, um, I should say, is, is um, yeah, is uh, can be quite uh, can be quite intense. Or I should say, uh, we have a lot of informality, uh, basically, um, the role playing, for example. Um, so you have a wide range in terms of um, in terms of approach. And in terms of uh, informality and formality, uh, arguably, what a lot of uh, universities offer tend to stick to uh, to a certain um, uh, scheme of formality because very often they are dealing with their own students, students that they have interacted with in first life, and so there's an attempt to maintain a certain, you know, a same a same kind of uh, environment and the same kind of experience or a similar experience. But obviously, this also varies, and it depends on the teacher, depends on the person who is leading the activity. 
Um, let's see. Well, there are several questions here. Um, I'll just see if I can grab one. Right. Yeah, yeah, Doris, uh, just, just to uh, uh, talk about your point here uh, about active learning. I think um, one of the uh, an additional affordances, which I think is not actually uh, um, on this list, is that uh, I think Second Life, because there are complexities involved, because there is such a learning curve, I think it, the platform really helps to reinforce the idea um, that, that lifelong learning is needed. Um, and this, once again, is related to the de-evolution of, of the teacher status or the, or the evolution of the teacher, teacher status, in my opinion, um, uh, to becoming more of a facilitator and, and an active learner uh, versus someone who knows everything already. Um, so we, we end up all because of, because of the, this learning curve, because there's really constantly something, something new to learn. Yeah, just to respond to Doris's question, again, I, I've been in Second Life since 2006, late 2006. Mm -hmm. Right, I agree. Yeah, Doris, I'm not sure what you mean by, by how have you evolved. Uh, would you mind elaborating? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Sorry, like, can I? Mm -hmm. can I okay. Please. You know, since you first came into Second Life, I have seen... I was there too, and I had seen your uh, efforts as a as an educator, and I had seen how you you know things had moved and, had, and things have changed, and you're still there. So what makes you to stay in school life for so long? What what is it that you believe that is good for educators to come back, to come to and find? Why are you still there? Right. Well, I, you know, right when I joined, I, I totally believed in, in the in the potential of the platform, and I was. I guess I'm also very passionate about learning, and that helps. So, um, and, and helping others too. That that's also, I think, something that I would uh, character, characterize myself as being. Um, and when I when I when I came in, I I think almost on, on not on day one, but maybe day five, I started uh, um, looking for ways to um, to make the platform a a platform for or not make it for teaching, but to basically make use of it in that way, I started throwing up textures on prims and, and inviting people to come and, you know, just looking at a, at that time we only had text, if you can imagine, for, for the first couple of years, um, I had to, to design activities which were totally text-based, which um, it may sound funny now because everybody's used to using voice, but it really was uh, very interesting. We, we had a lot of um, um, uh, deep, and I would say, I don't know how to really express it, but a lot of the, uh, maybe it's uh, also related to what you mentioned at the beginning, um, Nelly, about te text and, and, and how it can, can be really, you know, of value in terms of um, lending itself to, to expression and whatnot. Um, a lot of people were, were really willing to open up uh, because they, they simply needed to, to type. And um, so it was actually a problem later for a lot of people when voice was introduced. Um, and this is this is on uh, this is uh, mentioned in the list as well. Um, uh, there are so even today there are people who avoid using voice simply because they are part of the old school, so to speak, and they totally rejected voice when, when it was introduced because they, they they wanted they felt like a certain degree of I immersion was lost uh, because of the introduction of voice. And I think that to a certain degree that is uh, there is some truth to that. Um, but arguably, also some uh, a certain uh, kind of immersion has been gained. Uh, so we, we've seen uh, a bit of both. Um, but to answer your question, um, uh, Doris, I think I, I could probably write a book about about you know how things have changed uh, for me over the year. I have gone through through various phases uh, in terms of uh, how much time I've spent in there. The first couple of years, I I, I really um, I really spent a lot of time in there. So I I had a lot of late nights, you know. Uh, but it was all, you know, passion-driven. It wasn't because I felt like I had to be in there. It was because I wanted to be in there, uh, developing things and, and trying to, to get things going. Um, and now, now I don't, I don't have this, this, um, you know, I don't have a need to, to go in and stay in there forever. I basically uh, go in there, and um, whenever we have activities, I obviously we support people. So whenever anybody has a question, I go in and I help out. And then whenever I have my own activity, uh, I, I go in and then offer it, and then I log out. So I don't tend to be in there, you know, forever uh, anymore. I have a, a lot more uh, 
first life, second life balance, so to speak, which is also important. Um, so that's, that, that is one fear that, that a lot of people have at the beginning when they think about uh, these immersive environments that, oh, uh, this thing, you know, it, the platform will suck me in and I won't be able to log out. Uh, there's a little bit of truth to it that, that it is highly immersive, but I think it's very similar to, to other platforms um, or other mediums such as television even. Uh, we, we know where the remote is, we, we know how to log out, and that's basically uh, something that, that, that people have to do. Um, in order to yeah to avoid spending too much time. What I remember, time. Kip, is you know Doris asked a good question. I remember you way way back, um, and what I remember is how your name kept changing. <laughs> I don't know if you realize that, but your name kept changing, um, you know, until it kind of stabilized, and and you had a name, and then the, the, not just your the, avatar, the no, not just that your avatar too, and and your real name. You know, your real name okay. is no longer, okay. you know, you, I know your real name, but you can't see it anywhere anymore. I mean, you've mm -hmm. taken over, uh, you know, Kip is now your name. And for a while it was, it was Yellow Knife. Well, I mean, for a while you were, you know, I thought, well, this guy's an Indian. You know, I used to go, well, so where, where is the, <laughs> where are the feathers? <laughs> you know, I look for the feathers in, in second well, life. I, I need to explain that. I think there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, Kip is actually my, my first life name, but it's not on my birth certificate. It's it, it's a nickname that I was given uh, when I was born. Um, uh, I was named after my, my grandfathers, Charles and Tally, and, and my last name is Boan. And I'm not a Charles. I don't identify with that. And my parents also didn't didn't want to call me that when I was born, so they gave me the name Kip. So I actually chose Kip as my second life name because it, because it is, uh, in my opinion, my, my actual first life, a real life name. It's just not legally my name. So when I sign things legally, I'm supposed to use Charles. And what about so Yellow Mystery Knife? Soft. Or Yellow, what was it, Yellow yellow Knife? I don't think I've changed my name. I don't think I've changed my last name over the years. I have had uh, several yeah. avatars. Oh, that right, maybe, maybe, that could be it, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I've, mm -hmm. used avatars in yeah, and I've used avatars in a variety of, of ways. I, I had an avatar called, I still have it, um, mm called uh, Wiki Composer, and Wiki Composer is used for role playing. And Wiki Composer, for example, does not speak. Wiki Composer only types. And this, I, I think, adds to um, a bit of realness. But basically, what I play around with there is a spontaneous um, uh, role play. So uh, Wiki has a, has a story behind him. He was born in this virtual world. and. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit uh, to him, so I won't get to uh, you know go into detail about that. But I, but I've had several uh, avatars over the years, um, specifically, uh, you know, for for different reasons, um, basically. But you see, most people are saying that they don't change their name, so which is, you know, different. But maybe because because you started way off, I don't know. Maybe because you started early on, mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's why you kept changing, mm -hmm. trying things out. But there have been a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been back. You know, I came back since 2009. I had no time to go, and like it's completely different. In in the old days, we had to we had to design stuff, and you know, you had to, or there wasn't anything. And now everything's just there, and it, it's it's easier. But the technology is completely different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just scrolling down a little bit more. Okay, I'm just scrolling down a little bit more to see if there's anything else that that people might might see that they want to discuss. Um, we're still basically in the in the advantages part of the of, of the list. The concerns or the disadvantages come later. Uh, is there anything here that anybody would like to talk about? I'll, I'll also scroll through chat and see if there's anything I've missed. I'm sure there is. Other tools that you can combine and make this a more blended experience. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, a great one to mention is, uh, is so-called Prem Media, um, and that, that basically gives you the ability to have the entire web or, or any website. You can basically paste it or, or throw a link on, on, a, on any kind of a surface uh, in the virtual world, and you can, for example, watch videos, uh, browse to websites. Uh, so just about anything that you can do in a browser, you can also do within the virtual world. Um, so, and I think this uh, this allows for for once again a, a level of immersion that you don't have 
for example, anybody can, can watch a video on YouTube, right? It's one thing to sit at home and watch a video on YouTube. It's quite another thing to log into a virtual world and to sit uh, around, a, a, you know, sit with a group of people from all over the world and watch the same video and then discuss it and then be able to zoom in on it and to, to get up and walk around it. And it's, it's a different kind of, a, of an experience. And that's just one, one tool, um, uh, Doris, to, to mention one. Um, uh, other tools in terms of uh, uh, um, um, what's the, scaffolding, I think is the word I'm looking for. So, so using uh, a couple of different platforms together. Uh, you can also, there, there are tools for blogging so, or, or tweeting where you can uh, tweet uh, from within the virtual world and it automatically gets posted to Twitter or to, to some blogging website. Um, so you have tools like that, that as well. And of course, uh, another big one that's, that's popular is uh, the is Moodle, or so-called Sloodle. Uh, for any educators that are interested in Moodle, oh, we have yeah, the ability what about to also uh, integrate. Is it true, um, uh, is it true mm -hmm. that you can't uh, install Sloodle on Moodle 2.5 and up 2.6 and so on? Because I can't find it. Mm -hmm. That's a question that I would leave to a person like like Fire or Centaur. I, I think I would invite him to, to answer him. that question. I don't question. know where he is. Paul, you mean? I can't find Paul. He, okay. he just, I can't find him That's anywhere. Right. I, I've emailed him and I don't know where he is. Maybe if you can okay. get him. Um, mm -hmm. I can, yeah, I, I need, can try contacting him. I, yeah, he recently sent me an email. On my um, Moodle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With my right. Moodle. There's a poodle too. Exactly. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> Good. Uh, any other questions? I'll, I'll briefly go into the negatives too, the so-called concerns or disadvantages. See if there's anything that. Can you repeat that question, Kip? Can you repeat that question, Kip? Um, I'm not sure what question. Um, Okay, uh, Nelly, would you mind repeating your question for uh, Maria? For Maria? Um, oh, no, question. I think it's your question, mm -hmm. maybe. No, my question was uh, about Sloodle in two point five or two point six. Yes, that's right, Maria. Maria, you want to try your mic, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're at the bottom of the list. I realize we have not talked about everything. As you can see, uh, to talk about all of these things, we would probably have to do um, five, six, or seven MOOCs uh, just to, to really get through these different points. Um, would anybody like to discuss any of these concerns or these things that I have listed as, as possible disadvantages or, or things, you know, negative things to, to deal with? Equipment cost, yeah. <clears throat> Equipment um, requirements, computer requirements is an issue. Uh, the experience can, can vary greatly uh, for a person that has a low-end computer versus a person that has a high-end computer. You can really have a totally different uh, kind of experience. And that's something that can be frustrating. Um, the graphics issue alone, um, for example, if you're dealing with somebody who's on a laptop and a, a wireless connection and uh, a, a very, you know, a, a poor graphics card, uh, he may not be able to see uh, that the same thing that, that you see. So, you know, I've had the experience in the past where I've you know, pointed something out in the distance, and, and the person, because of either his hardware or his settings, his individual settings, um, was not able to see what I was talking about, right? So that, that can be an issue. But um, generally speaking, the, the, uh, when you get a new computer nowadays, it, it, it is typically Second Life compatible. Uh, free versus paid, okay. Mm -hmm. Free versus paid. Well, when I first joined uh, Second Life, I, I think I made a few enemies and also made quite a, quite a few uh, f um, uh, fans too because uh, I wanted to do everything for free while uh, others were in there and more interested in, in uh, pursuing, uh, yeah, had, let's just say, had more commercial aspirations. Um, I, I personally saw uh, an issue in terms of trying to charge people money um, in Second Life because, because we're dealing with people from all over the world. You have different currencies involved. And then on top of that, you have the Linden currency, uh, the Linden dollar, uh, which is the, the Second Life currency. Um, it's really hard to figure out what you might charge uh, for for any given activity. On top of that, because of stability issues, you know, my computer might crash. 
the, the participants' computer might crash. Um, uh, in the past, we had issues with, with you know, um, this hasn't happened in a long time, but in the past, we had these rolling restarts where, where the sim or the island we were on could suddenly just, you know, uh, go down because uh, the company that owned Second Life needed to, to perform an update. Uh, you know, all of those things uh, sort of sort of added to to instability, and so for that reason, and also the, the simply the desire to to avoid focusing on money, um, I personally chose to take the the free route. Um, that said, at Verlantis, we also make it possible for activity organizers to go in and, and offer you know private lessons or or um, even small group lessons uh, if, and charge for those lessons. Uh, if they are already offering uh, a free activity at Verlantis, uh, they can also make use of the platform for uh, for their own um, you know private uh, purposes, um, which might be more um, uh, more monetary or more more linked to to, to money, uh, so to speak. So we, we try to really make room for for both worlds. Um, but generally speaking, everything at Verlantis is free, and, and that's really the um, yeah the, the way we want to keep it. What about game versus serious environment? This remains an issue. I, I'm, I'm often, I don't know if surprised is the right word, I'm often um, bothered by the, the fact that, that, that a lot of people, when they log into Second Life, they, they automatically think, and I've experienced this personally with, with students who um, here, you know, who have uh, tried to, to show uh, Second Life or who I've introduced Second Life to, they look at it and they say, oh, what, what is that game? Uh, so you have people who, who see it as a game, and uh, it quite clearly, in my mind, cannot be called a game uh, because there are no predefined goals or objectives. Um, and even even according to Linden Labs' uh, definition, it is a virtual world. And basically, uh, you can you can make uh, of this world. You can you can do what you what you wish with the world. So there's a lot of potential there. Um, you can turn it into a game. Uh, you can even find games within the virtual world. But to call it uh, and to define it as, a, as, as being a game, I think hap, ha, uh, has more to do with, um, with personality differences and mindset differences. Um, for example, a lot of people uh, like to see real life and first life as a kind of game. And so they don't you know, uh, take their interactions uh, very, very seriously. Um, and you can experience the same thing uh, in, in Second Life and in virtual worlds. So you have some people who just want to fool around, uh, even want to disrupt, right? Um, and, and bother other people. Uh, So-called griefing is a word that is common in Second Life, uh, and you have you have precautions, you have things that you have to do to kind of protect uh, yourself and your activities from from things like uh, you know, griefing and, and, and such disruptions. Um, but you have that world. You have the people. You have the people who see it as a game, and then you have this other world. Um, um, the majority of, of educators, for example, who see um, a lot more serious potential there. And uh, and do not do not uh, yeah um, do not uh, see it as a game and do not make use of it in, in that way. Password protected SL password areas. I I don't know about password protect is protected, but you can protect different areas. Um, for example, at Verlantis at the moment we are um, group access only is is what we would call it. So basically, you have to be uh, in the group in order to to come to Verlantis. And um, before our time is up, I would really like to invite everybody to uh, to contact me if you are interested in in finding out more about Verlantis. It really it's hard to talk about a lot of these things. You, you really need to to log in and experience these things directly. You know, so you need to feel what it's like to to have an avatar. You need to feel what it's like to walk around in these environments, uh, to see a holodeck. Um, um, uh, res or, or appear around you um, to, to uh, participate in an activity, um, to meet other people from all over the world. It, it's much better to have an actual, you know, a direct experience. Um, and I invite everybody to, to contact me. Um, I'll just drop my email address here um, if interested. I, I will gladly deal with people on an individual basis. Uh, we can schedule a time. I can do a demo. I can walk you around the island. Uh, I'm happy to spend time with you and, and to, to, to really help you get started even. If you're interested in simply participating in activities, that can be uh, facilitated. And of course, if you want to offer your own activity, that can also be made possible. Okay. Is there anything else that we should discuss? Uh, I said we have about eight more minutes probably. I don't know if there will be extended time. Um, 
any of the pros or cons that you would like to talk about or, or any general questions at all? I'll also mention the website, of course. Also mention the website, of course. Um, yeah, go ahead, please. Time confusion is always driving. You know, second lifetime, and we are. I get crazy with that. How do you manage that? Right. It's, it's, right. It's it, it can be it can be uh, complicated, especially when when there uh, when we experience time change. Right. So that's that's always a, a problem. Time recently uh, changed here. Uh, time changes require us to update the calendars, um, so we have to go in and change change the uh, the times that are mentioned in, in the calendar, uh, and things like that. But otherwise, we, we simply refer to pe people to to online tools like timeanddate.com and, and other other similar tools, which allow people to convert uh, from one time zone to another. And uh, generally speaking, people eventually get used to so-called SLT or second lifetime, and that is U.S. Pacific time. So basically, one has to get used to uh, converting from U.S. Pacific time to their own time zone. So wait a minute, it's Pacific, right? It's uh, Pacific, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Se Seattle or San Francisco. Right. San Francisco. Uh, British Columbia, sorry. For example. Vancouver. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That works. Mm -hmm. That works. <laughs> but I see that you need a, a different viewer can, for Vertlantis. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Avination. Can you tell us a little bit about Avination as opposed to, uh, it's another world, I presume, to Second Life for people who are not familiar with mm -hmm. either? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, before going into that, I just want to address uh, Hal Halina's um, uh, question here. Why don't you show us how to teach a language on Second Life or in Second Life? <laughs> I'd be happy to. Uh, and we can do this in a number of ways. Um, you can join us and participate uh, in an activity, uh, or you can observe an activity. Ideally, participation is, is better. Um, uh, or we can actually do an activity together, so we can do some team teaching, so to speak. Um, there are a number of ways that, that I could uh, introduce you to the, to the world of uh, teaching in virtual worlds. So simply contact me if, you, if you're serious about that, and I'd be happy to, to follow that up with you. Um, Regarding Avenation, that's another alternative to Second Life, and there are pros and cons to that platform as well. Um, and we, we basically have it as a kind of Plan B at the moment, but also uh, we're also uh, lo looking at it as, as as using it for people who might be a bit more, how should I say, reluctant to get involved uh, in, in Second Life because of uh, you know certain certain issues that, that, that are present in Second Life, such as, you know, the, the presence of adult content and things like that. Uh, even though that is not an issue at for Atlantis because we are a, um, uh, a G-related sim, or sorry, G-rated sim, so basically we don't have any kind of uh, adult adult issues going on apart from our, our tea time conversations, which can, you know, can become, uh, you know, can venture into big big talk at times, um, apart from conversation, but, but, you know, no nudity or anything like that. Um, yeah, so Avenation, for example, we are, we are currently looking at using it for uh, private groups. For example, if a university is interested in, in having some activities and they really want to, uh, for some reason, uh, stay away from Second Life, then, then Avenation would be an alternative that we can offer them. And you can basically have a very similar experience in Avenation, but um, there are also a lot of things which are not there. For example, the community is not nearly as big. Um, Second Life is much bigger. There are a lot more things in Second Life, a lot more um, items in general. Um, and, and for me, every every object and every item has has the potential to uh, uh, to um, to stir up um, uh, conversation and whatnot. Um, okay. So, so Halina, I love that. Yeah, sorry, I go wish ahead. I'd known about this before. The fact that you can go in there and you're safe. You're not going to mm -hmm. be attacked by uh, ghosts or vampires or i'm talking about normal i mean i'm not talking about other stuff that's really uh so it would be safer for students say k-12 for high school students and that you, you know they would not are there other virtual worlds like for example, um avenation or i don't know is this they're just two kinds second life and avenation or there are several. there's several no there's several they're there's several virtual worlds right mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I mean you can you can look for um, if you simply do a Google search for alternatives to Second Life, I'm sure you'll find a whole a whole list of um, 
uh, of different different worlds. Yeah, Kitely is another Kitely one, for example, money. which is Elon which is well known. Is a friend, mm -hmm. so yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. But but they cost money. Yeah. Right, but there are some that are totally free, open sim based worlds, and it's also possible to install your own world if you have your own server. But that, of course, involves um, yeah more technical know how and and also resources. Well, you need to build. Uh, to be able to maintain, uh, to be able to maintain um, and so maintained, on. Maintained, yeah. like plants? What do you mean maintain? Ma maintain, maintain, maintain. In terms of just uh, ma maintaining the, uh, the the platform, the maintain, oh, okay. maintaining the server um, yeah. in general, server ma maintenance, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're, you're right. Tom, you're, you're saying something about when you when you try to enter uh, for Atlantis. It, it might be because you are not um, in the group. We've recently had to basically um, restrict uh, it to group access, so you need a, an invite. Uh, and basically, what we're doing is we are we are um, doing a voice check on everybody that, that that joins the group. So we want to basically get to know the person that that, that wants to join the community, so as to ensure quality, basically, uh, and to um, to help avoid uh, certain disruptions well, which I'm can come about. I'm also trying. Yeah, I'm also so, trying to uh, go in, and mm -hmm. I'm finding it very difficult. I can't, I mean, I try to, I'm mm -hmm. on a Mac, so I try to download the viewer, which is also not such a, for the Max, it seems to be problematic. And I can't get mm -hmm. an account, so what do you do? Okay. How do you get an account? Well, to get an account should be, uh, well, to get an account should be quite easy. You simply need to go to the Second, uh, Second Life uh, website, so secondlife.com, and then click Join Now. Second uh, and, Life? And that's where I you would get, get your account. Mm -hmm. Okay, and okay, Avanation is what you're speaking of now. Avanation is a different deal. Uh, um, what I would recommend and what I, what I would say to everybody now is to ideally uh, to join our Facebook group or to simply contact me via email um, so that we can deal with anybody who's having issues uh, because these issues can be due to a wide variety of you know, uh, reasons. So it, it's hard to, to address them all um, here in this account. MOOC. Sorry, it doesn't um, allow you to create an account. It, it's either you forgot your account or that's it. You don't, it, there's no create an account on the platform. Okay, I'll be, I'll be, happy, to okay, I'll be, I'll be happy to deal with, uh, with that question okay. um, later with you, Nelly. No problem at all. What um, about the others? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, it should be an issue to create an account. Mm -hmm. So if it is one of these editors who want to go and, and try and give it a try in your, in Virtlantis, in a few tips, how can get they started? Right. Well, um, right, well um, the best thing to do is to to check out the website um, and simply get some information there. Uh, so, Atlantis.com is the website, and then to to contact myself or another contact person would be a Braxis uh, McAndrews, and really the Facebook group um, is a great go-to point because a lot of our activity organizers are in there. And this allows us to to sort of you know to to make it so that I'm not always the person helping, or Braxis is not always the person helping, but but other people as well. So we can, as a community, we can help people get in, help tr help them troubleshoot any technical issues and, and uh, whatnot. Kim, can you uh, screen share? Because I went in there, and mm -hmm. so that everybody can go in. Maybe we can have a meeting together as a group, and you can kind of take us. Uh, not right now, but maybe we can schedule it for another time. But for now, can you screen share by going to the sure. screen share and just take us through there, uh, through the signing process? Because, process. yeah. Oh, the signing process, okay. Sure, okay. Yeah, yeah, let's let's try to do that. Um, it's as simple as going to the, the secondlife.com. We're speaking no, about Second we're Life, talking right? About, uh, no, we're not talking about yeah. Verplantis. Okay. Mm -hmm. How to join? Okay. There's the link. Right. I'm, I'm, I just. Yes. Yes. That's the best place to go on the Virtlantis website. I'll grab it too. Um, because I think most most of us to join teach blended or fully mm -hmm. online courses would love to go into something like that with our students because I think I personally would feel a lot safer taking. Mm -hmm. I I would never consider taking my high school students to Second Life. But to Vertlantis, I would, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if it's private. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It's totally private, right. It's totally private, and it can really be made private. You know, for um, only for spe specific persons. We have the ability to basically um, 
the, the island can, is divided up into different parcels. And this is typical everywhere, not only at Verklantis. And you can have people on an access list. So if I, if I were working with a specific group, I, I would simply need the name, uh, you know, a list of the names of those avatars, and I could make it so that only those people could, could enter that space, right? Not only I, but, but any activity organizer is able to do this. Um, just start, start screen share and see All how right, this goes. Sure. Okay, well, let's hope it does. <laughs> Forgot. Do you see my screen? No. Do you yet. see my screen? No. Um, your, your eyes. But right now it's just, um, you're not on a Mac, are you? No, you're not. Let's see. Oops, application blocked. Let me see. I can change that. Your security settings have blocked. Oh, okay. So are you on a Mac? No. Okay. Oh, you are. Mm -hmm. no. Well, no, I'm not. You're not. Okay. No, no, I'm not. It shouldn't be a problem then. Unless you're using Chrome, then you would need to use Firefox for screen sharing. But all, all I would. No, I'm not. Not at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would like to see, Doris. I'd like to see. Uh... I'm using Wait a minute, Chrome, so you can yeah. go through Second uh, Life. Vertlantis is in Second Life. Then I'm completely confused. Oh, it is. That's correct. That's correct. Vertlantis is an island in Second Life. That's right. Uh, but we also have oh, a location okay, okay, in okay. Avenation. That, okay, I'm clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And everything should be self-explanatory there. You know, when you look at the how, how to join page, uh, most of the steps, are, I guess all the steps are mentioned, you know, what you need to download, um, how to get a username and password. Uh, but we are more than happy to walk people through the process. So, um, Have you gone through? We can also arrange to... Max to like? yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I log in on a oh, Mac okay. regularly as well. Yeah, that's generally not an issue. I, didn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't get the viewer on. Oh, I did get mm -hmm. it on. I did. I, I got also it. Skype I got it. Sorry, I got right. it. Yeah, okay. So it's fine. Okay. So I'll, great, great. But I'm sure you have a video, a YouTube video or something so, on how to do this and how to go in and what's there. I'd love a tour. Right, well, you can find a number of videos in terms of how, how no, to join no, no, Second Life Second and how to, talking you know. About uh, Avenation. Avenation is something that we've not really made public. Um, or, or we've only made public on the website, but we haven't really gone out and advertised it a lot. So our focus is primarily Second Life at the moment. But Second Life is not private, mm -hmm. or is it? Uh, group access only. Uh, group access only. So you have to be in the group uh, to come to Vertlantis. Um, Second Life in general is public, a public uh, a sphere or, or plat a platform. Uh, to come to Vertlantis, you have to join the group. And that, that requires getting an invite. Yeah, a group Go invite. ahead, Doris. Mm -hmm. Lily, Seoul is in Virtlantis right now, and also Tuanghuana, and I am mm -hmm. there also. So no, I wanted to want get into Avenation. No, I was trying to get into Avenation. Mm -hmm. That's all. And Avenation, now I understand why it wasn't no. possible. Yeah, Avenation is really, I think, uh, yeah, is really, I think uh, a later chapter. It's something for us to perhaps do a, a separate yes. MOOC on because we've All yet right. to really get in there and offer okay, activities. Okay, I've got a date and, for you, June, uh, yeah. for the uh, Moodle MOOC. Okay, great. Okay, I'm really good. excited about that because okay. that, that's what I would like mm -hmm. to do. Thank you. That was great. Okay, okay. sure. So, Doris, what yeah. do you suggest Suggest that someone screen us into um, Second Life for Atlantis? Yes. Yes. It's all in there and she can do it. So she can, if you give her the rights, she can. <coughs> Excuse me. Perfect. All right. So, Maria, let me. Um, where's Maria? Is she in here? Oh, I see her. Okay, Maria. Okay. Oh, she's on a um, desktop, which is great. Okay, so she shouldn't have any problem screen sharing us into that. I've never tried uh, screen sharing. Uh, I've never tried uh, screen sharing uh, on WizIQ uh, or screen sharing Second Life, so I'm yeah, not I quite did. sure how it, will, how it will do. And it actually, yeah, it's okay. Great. It's coming out quite well. If your CPU is not, oh, there you are, Maria. Hello. Great, Maria. Hi. 
Hello. Hello, hi. hi nice to see you. Do you know Maria? Hi, nice to see you. Okay. Oh, okay. In second Sorry. life, yes. <laughs> Real life. Okay. Yes, we are friends. <laughs> bye, bye. So do you see it? Oh, you see it. I see that you've started it. Okay, excellent. Excellente. <laughs> Okay, so we're off to see the wizard. Mm -hmm. I think we... Did somebody, share? did somebody extend the class? Okay. There we go. Excellent. Great, I see it now. I didn't no, it's extend. Okay, we've got 39 I, I, I minutes. That's I fine. Oh, I think that's... I extended. Okay. No, no, Great. it was me. Oh, you extended? No, me. Thank it... you. Grazie. <laughs> yes. Great. Yeah, perhaps I should explain where she is at at the moment. They're at the, the new home location. We are currently reorganizing a bit on the island because we, we closed, a, 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 we had two islands at one point and we closed one of them down. And we're now moving some things over from that, old, the, the, you know, the island that's, that's been closed down. She's actually at a home point and uh, we're, we're still working on this on this space uh, just beyond beyond her so if she were to turn around um, um, and look toward the water uh, there is an info point uh, where you can get more information um, and uh, you see some things in the distance scattered about that's because we're, we're still uh, uh, organizing quite a bit but um, yeah that that environment there is just one example of a, of a uh, a place that can act as an activity location. Yeah, here's all the mess that's scattered about that we still need to place. So maybe not, don't focus on that too much. It, it, it will soon be slowly, gone. Slowly, Maria. Um, that you space there is slowly actually slowly because otherwise we're not getting it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this space here is actually a big sandbox. Uh, in the distance, you see a, a place called Salam, uh, which is where we had a, an Arabic activity in the past. Um, so I think we'll, we'll end up with uh, approximately 15 different activity locations on, on the ground um, alone. And then we have several activity locations in the sky, um, plus the ability to basically make new activity locations and customize them for people if desired. So for example, if a person wants an airport, airport scene for some reason, for role play or whatever, that's something that can be arranged. Uh, we are also willing and and and, uh, and eager to to invest in new things. So if a teacher identifies a tool and they say, "Look, I would love to be able to use this at Fort Atlantis," uh, this is something that we're also willing to do, um, free of charge, right? So we we really go out of our way to not only provide set activity locations, but also to to allow for for tailor made um, environments. And this is a home point here, so this is just, uh, and you can see in the distance there, yeah, right there, um, straight ahead, um, is the info point. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Going up yes. in there on the, on the uh, ramp. That is the info point. That's right. That is the info point. That's right. Where the ramp is. If you were to walk in that direction, um, you would see. You already see it. There's the Google Calendar. Oh, yeah, right. Google Plus. Um, oh, is that a calendar? That's right. We're basically. That's right. We're basically. It's a tool that's that that's integrated with Google Calendar. So uh, we're able to update the activities, and then um, it this board basically updates automatically. Um, for us here, so that you can see the different activities um, uh, that are that are taking place today and also uh, tomorrow. Um, today we have French, for example, at uh, 12 o'clock Second Life Time. That's 9 p.m. Central European Time, um, and then also English Tea with Lemon um, is tomorrow, and then after that, the next day we have Second uh, Life English Book Club. And then ESL drama, which involves some role play, and then we have English Scrabble, which is actually offered by an activity uh, by an activity organizer who is from Austria, who started off as an activity participant, and now he has gained enough confidence in English that he feels comfortable actually offering this activity. And it's also you know, co-moderated um, uh, by by a, a native speaker um, who yeah who basically assists with with the activity, um, and they basically just play the Scrabble game 
uh, a virtual um, a version of the game and then make conversation at the same time. So it's we're talking about very informal learning. Yeah, you have. Uh, yeah, you have. Uh, you can click uh, these these um, these buttons at the bottom. The activity info, your your own activity, and the Google Calendar. All of these things are links, and they actually lead to the website. Um, so you can get additional information while you're in the world. You can go to our Facebook uh, group page by simply clicking the the F, uh, the Facebook icon, which you see there, and the same is true for Google Plus and, and Twitter. Yeah, I, I can't see chat at the moment, so I'm not uh, sure if there are any questions coming in. You'll be able to see it the bottom in. left, Kip, um, the bottom left um, of your screen. Ah, yes. Thank you, thank you. I see it. I've pulled it up. Thank you. You could also make it larger, you know. It's all... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, make Super. it Super. That's great. larger. I need to spend more time on this. The chat too. and the attendee mm -hmm. list, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I often say to people who, who come to Atlantis that there's there's more than than meets the eye, and I think that's ex that's very very true. Uh, not only for Atlantis, but for for any place that you go in Second Life, it's it's worth you know trying to get to know the place. Um, and uh, like I said, I'd be happy to to walk people around to do a, a guided tour or whatever to to, to help um, fast track that that process. Okay, so want me to show? Well, just to uh, perhaps uh, to mention, you know, how, how language is everywhere. This is something that I often, often mention in, in, in traditional classrooms um, in First Life. Um, you're looking at a campfire there, right? And that campfire alone can act as a kind of learning or teaching object uh, because you, you have the ability to interact with it. You can, you can put it out. Uh, for example, you can use the word douse, and actually a, a menu comes up uh, and, and allows you to, to do that. If you click that campfire now, you could douse it a few times, which is to put a, you know, a little bit of water on wow. it to kind of make the, make the fire That's calm great. down a bit. Yeah. So can you do that, um, and then you can actually, Maria? Mm -hmm. Somebody simply needs to left click and then choose douse uh, can a few times, too. and then eventually the fire will go out. No, it's okay. You don't have to do it. Yeah, because you're uh, using the viewer. But Doris can do it. You can't? No, it's okay. No, Doris is going to do it. Oh, okay, we can see what you're doing. That's good. You need to left click it, though, not right click. Um, uh, click off of it yeah, now and it. left click it with your left mouse button. And you should see a, a menu. I have the menu right now. It says help. It says. That's right. Is, uh, douse. Try try dousing it a few times. Ah, douse. If or you poke beer, it, the fire right, will get stronger. What does douse mean? I guess it means to put it out or to no. make it larger, to increase. To put it out. Uh, to, to put, to, out, to put it out, basically. Yeah. So no, on the left. Yeah, no, click douse a few it. times. It is already. Oh, you did it. Did it. Oh. It's over. How do you get it back? Okay. Now? Right. Sure. Now you can. Uh, you can clean the pit. You can clear it. Right. Clear the pits. That's great. Mm -hmm. But this is a great way to learn uh, German mm -hmm. or whatever. Perfect way to learn a language. Well, most the, the, the dominant meta language or the dominant language used in, in Second Life is English. Uh, but you can also interact with objects that, that are in other languages. But typically, um, uh, most objects are, are in English. So you wouldn't be able to have a, mm -hmm. uh, an activity where they're, they're forced to use a foreign language to do things? Yes. Uh, with, with objects, uh, you would have to you would have to find objects which are specifically you know scripted to be in in another language, and typically, um, yeah, like I said, the dominant language is English, so you'd have to look around. Wow, that's great. Yep. Okay. What what else do you want me to move a little? I don't know. Have fun. <laughs> We're enjoying it. Well, there's really so much to. To show you. Can you put um, your hands over it, it like you know, warm up? No. <laughs> you, you can't do that necessarily. Well, you could with a with a gesture if you if you found one. Uh, you, you can use gestures basically to animate your avatar in different ways. So, and you can really have an entire library of different gestures that you could use. Uh, but arguably, that's that's a bit more advanced um, knowledge or um, in Second Life. Not everybody uses. Um, 
uh, animations or, or gestures. No, but it's, it's in there. That, it's that in it be, I mean, you can uh, go into your inventory and get it. It's not like in the old days where you had to uh, get scripts yeah. for it. Yeah. Well, you have some basic ones. You have some basic uh, animations like, you know, clapping and things like that are already in the library, in, in the inventory. But for, you know, something more complex like, like warm, you know, warming up your hands over a fire, you'd have to, to look for one. Or make one. Mm -hmm. or, or make one. But but for me, you know, the fact that we're surrounded by so many different kinds of objects, not only the people that are there, but but the the incredible uh, um, variety in terms of what environments people can confront and the different types of objects. There's so much potential for for discussion of you know what is that? Can you tell me what that is? You know, uh, just uh, you can very easily go into all kinds of of conversation simply because you are surrounded by language in terms of. Uh, what is there represented um, by by objects? And on top of that, you have the ability to, and on top of that, you have the, ability to link uh, the learning process to an experience. So you have uh, experiential learning, uh, which which comes into play. You know, you can actually not only look at a at a at a um, I don't know a roller coaster. You can get on the roller coaster and you can ride it, right? For example, and that, I think that 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 helps uh, for the memorization process. The, the, this image and, and this experience uh, to language connection helps a lot to, to retain uh, the, the language that you learn. Like for, example, you could go and you could have a like, for example, you could go and you could have a shower now, right? There's a little shower over there. I don't know if you see it. Um, yeah, stop your video. Yeah, that's yes. fine. Yes. Okay, let me see. No. Right. Where's the shower? No. Oh, over there on the right. Yeah. There's, there's a bucket there. It's an Doris, outdoor shower. Doris, you want to get a shower? Um, Doris is running over. <laughs> I mean, Peonia <laughs> right. is running over. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> in the old right. days, Simply in the old days, if you should call somebody yeah. by their real name in Second Life, you were like, you know, tabooing. You, you were, you know, you were told off. But I think today it's okay. People are more open. Right. So we can see the Peonia right. is now, so the Peonia is now taking the shower. And of course, you know, this Use language like to dry off. Use language like to dry off, and, and where's a towel, and to talk about a body towel and a hand towel, and you know you can really <laughs> go into uh, to talking about to using different kinds of vocabulary uh, based on that one simple experience of, of taking a shower. You gonna sit in the bucket? <laughs> yeah, you need to left click. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. She's soaping. She's using, I don't know if she's using her hands or they're both taking showers. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's wonderful. That'll be clean. Yeah, right. After the yeah. <laughs> There's somebody else coming in there. That looks like Dex. Uh, if that's, that like that's oh. Dex, Dex is from Poland. He actually offers an activity for people who are interested in learning a bit, a bit of Sp uh, Polish and also learning I a bit about the Polish to learn culture. Polish. There, Helena, uh, so did you hear that? I hope you're still there. If not, you're watching the recording because Helena's involved in cultures. Mm -hmm. She's interested in cultures and in the Polish language. Mm -hmm. Polish is really hard to pronounce. And that, that's something I should probably say before we, before we finish here is that uh, Verklantis is not only about language learning, we also invite other subjects. So if a person is interested in trying to teach math or science or history or whatever, um, we, we welcome that. Um, the, the, the logic being that you have to make use of a language uh, when, when teaching uh, any subject. So it sort of makes sense. And also we, we, we try to, we're trying to bridge the, the world uh, of language with, with the world of art and with the world of music. And we have a, a fantastic cooperation with um, another community called Music Island, uh, which is something worth looking into. If you simply do a, a YouTube search for Music Island and Verklantis, um, we have professional musicians that come every week. Even tonight, there's a live concert, um, you know, classical uh, um, a piano to, um, um, to jazz, to, to classical guitar. Um, tonight, I think we have electronic music, so something a bit more experimental. Um, so we're trying to, to collaborate with, uh, with other communities as well, so, so that it's not just about language learning, it's about languages, music, art, all but of those worlds together. Do they stream the music, or is it something that they build in Second Life? 
They so stream they do it stream live. it live. They stream it live wow. and very professionally. That's amazing. Yes, they do. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened? We're not there anymore. We're not watching you take a shower. <laughs> oh, she's writing something. <laughs> Music. <laughs> Music Island. Yeah, I'm okay, going to the so, concert tonight. Yeah, please if anybody put wants the to link join in us. there yeah. so we can join you. Okay, we'll do. Actually, if you go to our, our Facebook oh, okay. group, you'll you'll find information there. You know I'll, 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 I'll grab it for you as well. Your Facebook group. I'm not sure that I got in there. Am I in there? Uh -huh. uh, if you're not, I can. I'll gladly okay, add, add you. It's easier than not a problem. To find you. Mm -hmm. And here's the link to uh, to, and here's the link to, uh, to tonight's concert. I'm that's pasting great. it into chat now. So that's actually, if I, so it'll let me, yeah. So that will lead you to Music Island's so Island, so, um, yeah event page. I love the relaxed atmosphere in Second Life. You don't get that in, um, you know, in any website or you know learning environment mm -hmm. anywhere. You know, it's all very kind of life stress. Right. You know, you, you go with yourself. So when you go into second life, you just can't right. help but just relax. There's nothing else to do but relax. Right, right. And the social context, you know, and the social context, you, you know, what, what you have here in terms of a social experience is something that is that is different. You know, um, you could we could always debate whether it's uh, uh, as good or, or better than you know other other tools such as Google Hangout and Skype and whatnot. But but quite clearly, it's a different kind of experience. So Google Hangout is also awesome. You know, for people who want to have a kind of face to face, you know, also immersive experience you know, in terms of seeing up to ten people um, in, in in video format. But, but quite clearly, virtual worlds represents a different kind of experience, uh, something that, that has other dynamics and, and, and other, other potentials. Well, the thing is... Uh, Rocky Bell, you know, would you, would you I, be I, clear yeah, yeah, what uh, I about think your is, question? What I wonderful is the fact that you don't have to talk in Second Life. You can just sit there, and that's fine. But if you go to a Skype call, mm -hmm. you know, or a Hangout or whatever, or, you know, WizIQ live class or... In any other environment, if you don't, mm -hmm. you know, kind of do something, then you're, then you don't feel comfortable, and you can't just be silent in a live mm -hmm. online class, you know. Imagine, but you can in Second Life. You can just sit there and, and, and not say anything, not, you know, text or, or use your voice. Just be. I think that's what's uh, yeah. special. You can. You can. You can. You can also have private conversations, so you don't need to. You can, for example, chat uh, in public chat or local chat, uh, or also called nearby chat. Or you can have uh, private, you know, uh, instant mes message chats, chats, or also calls. You can actually mm -hmm. call another person, just like you call someone yeah. with a telephone in real life. Uh, so, so you can have a private, uh, you know, voice conversation with another person who might be on a totally different island. Right. And just to emphasize, um, I, and just to emphasize um, I, I personally would not recommend that, that Second Life or Virtual Worlds should be uh, seen as a standalone platform uh, for, for e-learning. I, I don't think that they are uh, they're ready for that, um, but I, I see it simply as an extension um, to, to, uh, to what, whatever uh, other e-learning tools might, might be um, uh, in use. Um, so something as, like, like, more like an add-on than, than a substitute um, for for whatever experience um, we're talking about or whatever tool we're talking about. But you know what, if it's, if it's not, you know, an HTML5, you know, if it's not in your browser, and it is kind of in your browser, but you can't really, it's separate, and the separation uh, I don't think is such a great thing. For example, let's say I want to be in uh, a Google Drive document. I'd like to have Second Life next to me so that mm -hmm. I can, you know, to have it like side by side, and you can't, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you can. Well, you can if you have, for example, uh, the Windows Seven operating system. You can very quickly um, um, throw uh, two two windows side by side, just by you know dragging and dropping to the left, dragging and dropping to the right, you know, and you'll have a uh, you'll have both uh, both windows open uh, rather evenly. Or, or you can also manually um, resize windows so that they are side by side. That's possible. Then, if you have the luxury of having two monitors, then you can throw one thing on one monitor and have the other on the other. 
which well, is which I is do actually that what on I do. my Mac, but it's it still doesn't feel the same. It's mm -hmm. not, it, you know, you can't interact mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. with this. People can't don't have that. You may have it, but they don't have it. So it doesn't feel the same. You're, mm -hmm. you're, I understand. You either have more than somebody else. You're not equal. Let's put it this way. You're not having the same kind of um, technology experiences because right. you're not at the same level, but, or you're, you know, you've got different capabilities. But regarding your Google Docs uh, example, that's something that I could uh, put on any kind of a flat surface in Second Life. So if I want to show Doris or Dominique or anybody um, a Google Doc, I can simply put it on an object and, and they can view it at the same time as me. Within the virtual world, we don't have to have a browser. We can forget about the browser yeah, altogether. That, which I think is a good thing and a bad thing. But can mm -hmm. you... Well, actually, you can be writing at the same time on a Google Drive and seeing it in Second Life. You could be in two places at the same time, so that's not, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. You still want to see We're something else it. here? Thank you. You're mm -hmm. doing a great job. Much better than I did. You could. <laughs> You could fly up in the air, perhaps, to, to give everybody uh, an overview of, of what the island looks like at the moment. If you, yeah, you can zoom out or you can fly yeah, as, as you wish. The island is actually quite big, so she would have to zoom quite a bit or, or fly some um, because it's really, it's really big. Yeah, she's flying. Okay. And I, I'd like to stress we're not quite finished um, <laughs> reorganizing, so... Uh, things are, are you know, still being worked on. Yeah, if you could maybe look back towards the, the middle. Yeah, there you go. I'll see her, her settings. I can tell that she has her settings so that she doesn't see everything in the distance. Uh, so depending on your settings, the so-called draw distance, um, that, that can determine what you see in terms of, you know, how far you can see into the distance. Mm -hmm. That's Music Island right there, right there by the way. Down there? Oh, at the bottom? There's this oh, big the white, white uh, mm -hmm. tent-like structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Music Island. And you can see they have some flags there. And the reason they have the flags up is because uh, the concerts are very international in nature. You know, they have the person who, who will be performing tonight is from Denmark, for example. Uh, the guys who performed uh, uh, the other night were from Holland. Um, you know, so it's really the music that is played there is, is very international as well. So it's really a perfect match uh, with uh, what we're doing at Atlantis, I think. And tonight, tonight will be interesting if, you, if you're looking for an experience because um, uh, Torben, he plays electronic music, even if it's not your kind of music, um, uh, uh, they use a lot of different kinds of um, light, uh, lighting and, and different kinds of special effects uh, at, at Torben's concert. So if you want a different kind of experience in Second Life, you, you might want to think about coming tonight to the concert uh, because Do it's you have uh, vehicles yeah, or moving experience. objects that you can get on? We do. We, we do. We just haven't placed them yet, but um, they're, they're in that pile of things that you saw. Uh, we have uh, some um, hang gliders and um, uh, yeah, uh, various uh, types of things for, for for getting around the island in the water and also in the air and also on land. Mm -hmm. If you walk across that bridge, you'll you'll get to the library. That that might be interesting, um, just because of how it looks. And for people who are actually looking at this on video or who watch this later, I'd like to stress that that we are screen saving at the uh, screen sharing at the moment, and so that the graphics quality is is not you know it's not what she sees uh, in in world uh, or in, in, while she's in there now. So this is not what you would experience. Um, if you were actually logged in and, and, and walking uh, like she is now, uh, the graphics would be better for you. Yeah, so this is just, um, this is the Sanctum Tower, and this here at the bottom is just a another potential activity uh, location. We call it the library. And, um, yeah, you can see. Meditation hall. 
Well, it is, it is a relaxing environment. And there you've got an example of a, of, of a web, web on a prim or prim media. So you can see that the website has already loaded for her. So you, you could actually interact with that, you know, with that board. You could zoom in, you could click, you could scroll down. Uh, you could do all that on that board right there. I can smell the candles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really need to experience this, uh, you know, yourself. Though you need to log in because it's it's one thing to look at it uh, in a video, and it's another thing to actually Isn't be there like with your, your office avatar or somewhere. And, and feel, Didn't feel we it. see you sitting somewhere? Uh, or my? Yeah, that's that's two I floors up. So. I and, it, uh, you'd have to click the teleporter. Something, but it looked familiar. <laughs> that's called the study. Yeah. Uh, the place you are referring to, yeah. And I want to give credit to a person who really helps us a lot uh, in terms of you know designing the island. Uh, his name is Emir in Second Life, um, and uh, he he has really um, I, I would say he has a, a a very good eye for beauty, and um, he's done a lot of the a lot of the design work uh, on the island. These mountains, for example, were were designed by him. This bridge. Was uh, was created by him. This pathway that you're standing on, this pathway that you're standing on uh, actually goes all, all the way around the island. So you can you can walk all the way around the island. Uh, perhaps that's something you want to do. Perhaps you just want to walk down the path. Oh, oh you're looking it. into the study. Yeah. yeah, that's the study. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we've done interviews here in the past, and that's another thing that I think is worth, worth stressing. Virtual worlds is not just something to, that you can use for language learning in terms of language learning activities. You could also use it for digital storytelling, right? You could go in and record short scenes, uh, piece together an interesting video, uh, uh, overlay it with text, and, you could, and, and there you go. You have a kind of digital storytelling tool. Um, uh, you can use... This 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 world um, or these worlds in so many different ways, um, not only for for in in world experiences. You wanted me to walk somewhere when I was showing your when I was showing the study. You said if she walks okay. somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Could you, could you just follow the path? Um, yeah. If you could just walk and uh huh. Just yeah. You can cross the bridge and just follow the path if you want. Don't go too fast. Slowly. So we can get a nice glimpse. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I look forward to screen sharing. I, I look forward to screen sharing um, yeah, technology improving. I've asked for um, that. I've been I'm bugging them because um, right. I'm inside the tree now, wow. inside the trunk. You can go inside. There's there's no furniture at the moment. I need to well uh, there are a few pieces, yeah, but that will actually be that will be redecorated. Yeah. It will not look like that for long. Okay. It's a, it's a work in Where's progress. Where's the shower? Yeah. I think she needs one now, right? <laughs> After so much walking. Yeah. So this is Losaida. Now you care. And sometimes she goes barefoot. Yeah, so she must, that's why she needs to take a shower. Or at least, you know, put her feet in water. That's why she's wearing the She's so... You see, when you stop it, you see, to the right. um, Kip, when you stop it, you can see very clearly. It's just the motion uh, is problematic uh, with a lot of screen sharing apparatus. Right. That's, right. Another activity location. That's another activity location. It's called Soft Embers. Uh, we really try to, um, you know, communicate this, this feeling of, or, or this, uh, this, this, you know, the, the fact that we aim for relaxation, um, uh, even in the names that, that we use uh, to describe the different activity locations. So this this place is called Soft Embers. We have another place called Nestled Away. Um, so even even when when describing the different locations, we, we aim for for rela relaxation. Um, if you click that orange object. Um, do you see that that in the distance there, right in front of you? Um, that, yeah, that's actually a yeah, that's actually a teleporter. Um, so if you click that, you can choose um, any location. Let's see, choose. Um, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, click nestled. Let's go to nestled away because I, I, I mentioned that. Do you see nestled? N E S? Okay, you've chosen a different one. You might, okay. Take your time. Tea leaves, home, conference, party yeah, go, go to tea leaves. Go to tea leaves. Please. At the very top on the left. Tea leaves. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's actually in the sky. That's actually in the sky. Now you'll have to click the beam that when it loads. You have to left click it, not right click, but left click the beam that appears there. Yes. But it's not. It's all dark. Do you see anything? Yeah, you might. Okay, I think she's clicked too many times. Because I can see how dirty it is. It's so dark. <laughs> it's like it's perfectly okay. black. Right. Well, only one person at a time can click it. Um, so um, maybe click it one more time and only one person. And then you should. It says already in use. Do you see that? Because someone else is using it. Same time. So yeah. Mm -hmm. He's there also, mm -hmm. and I think he, at the same time we're not clicking. That's what happened. Yeah, you have to tell the others not to click. <laughs> yeah. See, right. it says many, many. Look at that. It says gathering mm -hmm. data, gathering data, but we're doing a left right now. Right. But in any case, uh, tools like that allow you to to go to other other spots on the island very very quickly. So it's like. Um, yeah, teleporting is what it's called. It's like basically instantaneously traveling to another spot on the island. So you can get to all of the activity locations via do such tools. Do you do um, the via, scripts uh, for all of these activities? Uh, I have in the past. Uh, I, have in the past um, I have, uh, uh, you know, you created my own teleporters with, with, with certain scripts, but um, I didn't create this one. We're actually thinking about replacing uh, these teleporters with new ones. Um, but um, they all basically fun function in a similar way. There are also teleporters which allow groups oh, yeah. to be teleported together. So you could, uh, you know, for example, teleport up to five people. Or there are various tools which allow you to to move around um, the island, um, either either solo or or as a group. Uh, there are a lot of freebies, so called freebies or, or free tools in Second Life. Uh, you can also find uh, a lot of freebies on marketplace.com, marketplace.secondlife.com. Um, but I, I paid for that particular tool. He was he, he told me, and then he said, "Right, okay, I won't." But he didn't let me use it. That <laughs> That's all right. So it's complete. Yeah, you can see. Up. See, I can't see a thing. I see it's all black. Mm -hmm. Is your screen? Okay. Oh, really? Well, I, no, mine's not oh, black. No, I, I, I see. see. No, yeah, we I see her. My screen is. Okay, we see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to go to that to that place. We must. Was this way or the other one? No. no the other way. It was the other way, but it doesn't matter. It was the other way, but it doesn't matter. You can you can uh you can go inside the library if you want to. There's another teleporter there. If you turn around and go into the library, or or go yeah go go where you are. That's fine. If you if you stop flying there, you can go back to the one where you were at um, the same teleporter. Oh, it seems you're going to the library. It's okay. Yeah, this is something that that ideally I would um you know. Uh, especially people who are new to Second Life, um, I would ideally meet with uh, with people and, and give them a personal tour and um, really show them how things work. And mm -hmm. so, do you see the orange thing behind you? Yeah, you can click that. Nestled. Uh, Yes, please. Choose this Nestled a great if you don't way mind. To learn a language too. You can have different um, names referring to different things. Mm -hmm. Is it used like that to get people to mm -hmm. um, go 
go on a virtual tour or a web or a quest of some kind? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, it really, I think, depends on the on the teacher or the, or the activity organizer in terms of uh, what potential is tapped into. Yeah, now click the beam. There you go. There you go. Now you're teleporting, and now you're there. So because we're, we're screen sharing, it will take time uh, for things to load. This is also, uh, this also depends on a person's hardware situation. I have a very good I can see that. That's Fantastic. Great. Yeah, if you turn around, you will see that we have uh, uh, another seating arrangement there. Um, so if you go in the other direction, uh, we have lots of chairs there. And um, there's also another print media board up on the wall. Uh, so activity organizers could go to a website or place a document or, or whatever. Yeah, right there behind you. So you see the board in the distance there. Yep. This is an actual tree house. This is an actual tree house. So you'd have to jump down, uh, to jump down. <laughs> or fly, or teleport. Yeah, she's now after me. Yeah, she's now after me. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> it's, yeah, there's people. Real team now. Okay. Yeah, here. I can see some people are starting to. Leave. I can see some people are starting to leave. I'll, I'll very quickly. Um, Paste in chat if I can. Let's see how many links will show up. I mean, you can do this yourself. You can go on YouTube and simply look for uh, Vertlantis and Second Life, and you'll find lots of videos related to Vertlantis. We don't have a lot of videos of the actual, you know, activities because typically you have to get permission to to record video videos of activities. But we're planning on doing do that mean? more I'm in the sorry, future. I missed that. But what these did you videos. Say about videos. That's when I. Of, yeah, to record videos of, of people and, you know, of avatars, you need to get permission according to uh, Linda Labs term, uh, terms and conditions. So well, you have to ask them if it's okay. Because you know? I think I've gone, I've uh, created, I mean, screen sharing and things like that. Well, Is that what you're talking about? Like, no, I'm just uh, saying, like, if, if you want to record a video and record an activity, uh, first of all, ideally what we, what we do is we ask people to, to notify the activity organizer that that is desired, especially if any audio is recorded, because then you're recording a person's actual voice, you know, so you have uh, privacy issues uh, to deal with. So basically, if you want to record an, uh, an actual activity or anybody talking in Second Life, you should, you should first speak with the avatar, with the person, and make sure that it's okay. Oh, okay, so what we're doing here is fine. Yes, of course. We, because we know yes, of course, we, because we know these people, and these people are are, are <laughs> happy to uh, cooperate. <laughs> so it's not an issue. Yeah. I pasted a few links here. Uh, I pasted a few links here uh, that will lead you to some videos that will give you a bit of an impression. Uh, but once again, you won't see a lot of actual language learning activity uh, in these videos simply uh, because of uh, you know what I just uh, talked about. So Maria, I hope you're taking a lot of photos. Doris too. I hope you're getting a lot of photos. I can see you are. Great. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now you see, now that they're not can... moving, it's quite clear. What else can... Quite can clear. I... It could be clearer, but. Right. Another point to mention, perhaps, also related to language learning um, and how to use Second Life in a different way, uh, is the word machinima. Um, which is basically using a virtual world or a gaming environment uh, to create videos. Um, and there's a lot of creative work going on, um, specifically uh, for language learning and then also for, for, other, um, for other reasons, for just, just to create art, for example. If you go on, on YouTube and look for Second Life Machinima, uh, you will find all kinds of interesting videos. And um, yeah, like I said, uh, people creating videos for, for, uh, for many different reasons, for educational purposes and also for uh, uh, for artistic reasons. That's what I'm uh, looking forward to. That's what I would like to do personally. I love videos, creating videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are no videos, in other words, or are there? Can you uh, probably buy a video in world and be able to take videos while you're inside? Is there, do they have such things? Well, 
Um, there are tools which which allow you to, for example, move your camera around in different ways so that you have smooth um, panning and, and, and things like that. So tools uh, in the virtual world which help you uh, to record better, better videos. But the actual recording of the videos is typically done by external software, uh, by software such as, uh, I use uh, something called Bandicam, but uh, Fraps is also common. And then you have, uh, yeah, uh, Adobe has software for that. So any kind of uh, desktop or, or, or screen uh, recording software can be used to, uh, to record. I use Camtasia, uh, it's quite good. World. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think uh, Screencast-O-Matic yeah. is completely free. I heard from Nancy that it's also quite good. Mm -hmm. I haven't used it myself. Mm -hmm. Some software is free, some is not. Yeah, some software is free, some is not. Kip, can we see you in there? Can you go in and yeah. uh, be yourself? We've got a few minutes. I extend it. Uh, if, uh, let's see. It'll be uh, nice I'll see how it goes. Kind I'll of try in both again. places. You can keep your um, mm -hmm. video right. on let's too. And you will see you okay. sitting there with the ladies. Okay. okay. This is something I've actually done in Second Life too. You, you can, you know, you can put up a, a website and uh, I've uh, had Ustream going at the same time, for example. So others could see me in, in, in real life and at the same time interact with me in, in Second Life. I'm going to, um, to nestle away right now, so you should see me any second now. Yeah, we see you online coming in. in my, do, you see me now in do you see me now in uh, Edward Atlantis? Yep. Getting your outfit on. I mean, the Great. avatar is outfit. Right, so I can go ahead and interact with everybody. I can use public chat and say, you know, say hi, hi everyone. How's but it going? Tell me, and so in, um, in the private virtual world, is it also going through the naked process of, of the avatar being without its clothes on, or is it a different system? I, I didn't quite catch the question. I, I didn't quite catch um, the question. What uh, you know, what kids that? are a bit Sorry. impressionable. Uh, do the avatars have to be naked be when they come in, or is it? Is there a system that allows you to have your clothes no. on when you come in, or is that just? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You, you get default avatars that you can choose from. Basically, you can you can be a human uh, avatar or a robot avatar, for example, uh, or even different kinds of vehicles. <laughs> when you first uh, sign up on, uh, um, uh, when you first join Second Life, you can choose a, a default avatar, which is automatically clothed, of course, and. Um, you can then later uh, uh, look for other clothes or, or, or change your avatar altogether. You don't have to be a human avatar. So you could you could be a robot or whatever. Um, you can totally avoid any kind of a nudity issue by, by simply being a non-human avatar, avatar, for example. I mean, some people are uh, so, how should I say, some people like to keep it very, very, Basic and, and and they might just be a be a prim or, or you know a block a, a wooden block and have that be as, be their avatar. So there's and then a lot of people uh, and then there are people who actually invest a lot more time in their avatars. So yeah, there's some really beautiful ones that look like real people. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I think next time perhaps I should um, screen share more, and then exactly. I could actually walk around yep, and, exactly. and show you. You can yeah, test a bit it more. with WizIQ mm -hmm. if you like to make sure that things are working well. Because they, right. uh, we got them. Doris and I got them to uh, start thinking about going into Second Life, learning how to do it, and then trying to improve the um, the screen sharing app tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm standing on the table now. Yeah, so table now. It's, it's typically not allowed in real life, uh, but you can do it here in Second Life. You can also sit through the couch, not on the couch, right? <laughs> That's also possible. That's also possible. So it's a, it's a perfect opportunity to uh, practice prepositions. Uh, on, in, right? <laughs> yeah. That's you right. You can't do that in the real classroom. That's a good point. <laughs> so Kip is yeah. in in the is it a stool in the table on the table i'm on the table at the moment i guess I could. Yeah, i'm on the table at the moment i guess i could be in the table I, I could make that possible simply by 
uh, because I can I can move this table so I can now now you can say I'm I'm in the table. Well, actually, it makes me go out, but let's see, it throws me out. But now I'm in the table. I'm in the table. <laughs> it doesn't like me to be in the table. It wants me to be on. Because you configured it that way. Right. Right. But you you can you can move these things. You can move objects around. You know. You can create your own objects. Uh, so this really. There's so much to talk about, Nelly, that it's <laughs> it requires almost a, a third life. You know. <laughs> Just <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we've got a we've got a robot or some kind of yeah, ahead, um, animated avatar, or it's not a human being; it's something else. What is that? There, someone's demonstrating with a that, gun, or what is it? There's a that's Amir. That's that's, uh, that's, that's our. I often call him our main builder. That's that's the guy who is um who's uh yeah I guess. Uh, the architect, say. designer, <laughs> he's designer. our ch chief designer of, of the island. Yeah, yeah. Let's see him. We can't see him, Maria. You'd have to zoom in on his avatar. You'd have to zoom in on his avatar, and he actually, um, you know, he's he's highly skilled. So he, he uses software like Blender, three uh, D software, and he actually makes objects outside of the three D world and then brings them into Second Life, uh, including his avatar. So he, he likes to make his own avatars. Wow. So he can add all kinds of detail. And he can add all kinds of detail, you know. Um, so we can hire yeah. him if we want something special, cust a customized uh, avatar. That's completely up to him. So that's, that's completely up to him. So if you know his name, feel free to contact him. Yeah. See, I I don't see the chat it's window. At the the, moment oh, I'm in right, you life. can't. Uh, That's something you can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm immersed in the other world. Uh, okay. Let me see. But you can chat for okay, me, yeah. and then we can see I the see chat, it. and then I can write in this chat if you want. Too bad we can't. That's what I'm saying. I mean, mm -hmm. if we could combine the two so that you would write in that chat box, and we would see it in this chat box, you know, going from one system to the other. <laughs> I mean, like. I mean, isn't it about? Right. Well, that's certainly isn't technically about, possible. Yeah. You'd have to get WizIQ IQ and, and, and Second exactly. Life to work together. That's what you know? I'm saying. Why can't everybody work with everybody so that we can do all kinds of crazy, like face, right. Facebook and Second Life? You know, why don't they work together somehow so that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. When you say that, but it, it's interesting because um, you know a lot of people are talking about scaffolding in e-learning. So uh, basically, making use of more than one platform, um, uh, the two D world and the and the three D world, or the one D world and the three D world. For example, Facebook and virtual worlds is one example of of scaffolding in e-learning. Um, and this is something that we've we've um, uh, now um, have been doing for quite some time in terms of our use of Facebook. Um, it really acts as a kind of um, yeah, it's a way for us to, to stay in contact uh, when not inside the virtual world. So we often talk about activities there, about language learning in general. I see somebody is yeah, that's what in I was the box. Say, you're in the box. <laughs> well, at least one hand, your body that's is right, in no, one no. hand. So that, that would be great for language, for, for the prepositions. Where is right. Kip? <laughs> Right. I've done activities in the past. With I've done activities in the past with uh, you know a long time ago actually uh, where I, where the focus was uh, prepositions and I, I can remember using objects in in, in a variety of ways uh, so getting the people people to sit you know on the chair stand under the chair uh, across from the chair and so on uh, so I've done things like that in the past. Mm. But uh, my, my, own but, uh, my, my own personal approach nowadays is more about just connecting with, with the learner as much as possible, um, not necessarily trying to do what, what, what can be easily accomplished outside of the virtual world. On websites, for example, you can practice all kinds of grammar exercises and, thing, and things like that. I don't think it's necessarily wise to come into the virtual world with that kind of uh, a motive. I mean, you can, 
uh, do such things, but but the, the world just offers so much in terms of uh, immersion, in terms of the ability to connect with another learner, um, that that it, it seems like it lends itself much more to uh, to conversational uh, type activities than than something well, grammar based. I think, for example, I think what's happening is we're realizing. Well, I hope we're realizing that you don't need to um, to do things that are not natural. Like you can, as you said, you can learn. Mm -hmm. You can kind of acquire. Uh, the idea of the prepositions rather mm -hmm. than kind of practice some like drill the drill yes. kind of um, exercises right. are, are not really the way li are not part of life it's the process it's not right. really you know okay so we did it okay right. great now what you know like it doesn't mean anything if you can do the right. exercises right. you have to experience right. it precisely Right, and think about when you study abroad. I mean, I think uh, uh, virtual worlds uh, represent basically the next best thing. If you're not able to to go actually go abroad physically somewhere, um, um, whenever you you know you have virtual worlds, and and, and you know I, I studied in France when I was 15, for example, um, and I was with a host family, so I was I lived in a family. I was surrounded by the language all the time. I was surrounded by objects, just like I'm surrounded here. So I was able to find out that you know, okay, a chair is uh, la chaise. Uh, tables like la, la table, you know, and, and I, I I learned the language uh, simply by experiencing the language and being surrounded by it, and, and nobody pulled out a grammar exercise and said, okay, now let's pr practice the prepositions. I, I don't think you know? languages. I tell them to my <laughs> students. I've always told you know they get angry at me, but you know I tell them right. you cannot learn a language in the classroom. Right. Period. So what am I doing here? Well, I'm just helping you pass exams. Right. That's the only thing you can right. do in the classroom, maybe. But yeah, that's what I like about this, that you can actually, um, instead of traveling and spending a lot of money, which we don't have, you can't go to every country, you know, um, you can learn languages simultaneously. You can learn French, you can learn Japanese, you can learn German at the same time, and, and you'll be fine because you'll be traveling in Second Life. Yes. Yes. It's, yes. it's, it's immersive exposure, I think, is, is perhaps a good way of describing it. Um, where else can you get this? I mean, where else can you get this? I mean, I, I live here in a small town, and I, I could not easily connect with somebody from France or, so, or with somebody from China and really feel like I'm sitting next to the person, you know? I'm mainly surrounded by Austrians. I can find a few people from different countries, but I, I don't have uh, the variety um, that, that I have in, in the virtual world. Right. Also for networking, you know, it, it's a fantastic platform for connecting with other like-minded people, whether we're talking about educators or language learners, you can go in here and you can start to build a network, you know, and you can interact with them within the virtual world or outside of the virtual world on Facebook, etc. You can decide where you interact, but you can start to net network with people here. You can join groups, you can, you can create your own group, and so on. I've now got, you know, over the years I've acquired so many different contacts. I've got thousands of people in my in my contact list. And, you know, if I have a question about China or if I have a question about what's happening in Russia or whatever, I, I have several people that I can go to, you know. I can find out, you know, what, what they think about, you know, whatever the... the, the Give to give you a concrete example, I, I was uh, contacted by someone, you know, trying to sell me a domain, a Chinese domain, uh, for Atlantis.cn, and I, I wanted to respond to this person in Chinese, um, and I, I connected with somebody who offers a Chinese activity at Atlantis, uh, his name is Li, and, uh, and he told me, um, he gave me the correct Chinese to use That's great. in the email, mm -hmm. yeah? I don't yeah, make this going to the concert. Yeah, the concert is starting. Right. Yeah, the concert is starting so can now. Can we get a look at the concert yeah, before right. uh, we 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 uh, go? So that sure, I can. Uh, I can Maria? walk that way. Um, are you, yeah, the person Maria, who is screen share have, have to, to come. Maria, are you are you tired? Yeah, do you think? Um, no. How do you pronounce your avatar's yeah. name? Lucero. Ah, Losiram. 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 Is she tired? Maybe we can teleport her to uh, the concert so we get a screenshot of the concert and a promo. Is 
stand up option. You're too tired. She's too tired to stand up, eh? <laughs> now she wants she, she won't stand, stand up. I can I can teleport you. Yeah. That would uh I can teleport you. Yeah, I'll fly to Music Island and then teleport you. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling her to stand. Okay. Well, okay, the, the um, light effects have already started here, so the concert is well underway. I'm looking forward to going. Um, I'll teleport you now. Can you add the link to the chat? I must have, I, I, to the concert? I must have an invitation. Thank you. Okay, yes, you're there. So if you look behind you, you'll see that the concert is underway. You, uh, if you go, if you change your settings so that you turn the sun down uh, to midnight, you'll be able to see the different effects better. That's a good point. Doris, do you have the um, mm -hmm. the slurl for the concert? If you can add in the chat box so that we can also a go. Mm -hmm. I see once again we are screen sharing and so things are, are, lo are loading true. very, very slowly. It's draining. Um, I, al I already see everything yeah. very well, for example, um, in my viewer. Mm -hmm. But you can see the different colors and stuff um, moving around. These are actual effects. And if you were logged in, you, you would yeah, have a very interesting oh, experience. Oh, but we have to ask so them, right? We have to ask them if we... Um, if, okay. no worries. What do you mean? It's okay. No worries. No worries. It's okay. I, I know the person at Music Island. We're okay. But that's what you meant, right? We have to, you have to get permission in order to record anybody or... Um, generally speaking, but especially when voice is used, that that's then it's I'm especially it's an issue. So I think when... when music. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no worries. Everything's okay. So she's sitting down there? Yeah, so she's sitting down there, as we can see. I'll actually join her. I'll sit beside her. Or near her. And that's uh, you see Kate Miranda to my left. She's the actual organizer at um, at Music Island. So yeah, she's she's. Uh huh. So she, yeah, she does an excellent job of of getting all these really fantastic musicians to come and and uh, perform here. And second, uh, the uh, Music Island community is. I think uh, just as old as, as the Verglantis community and, and has a, a fantastic reputation uh, in Second Life. Uh, they also won, I think, the um, uh, Best Practice Award, I think, um, in education, I believe, not so long ago. So, yeah, they're, they're well known. This is Kate Miranda, look. Yeah, there she is. But she's gray right now. So yeah. sorry. That's okay. Yeah, ideally people need to log, yeah, people need to log in because it's yeah, a totally we're different there. experience. We just need, I'm looking for the, in the chat. If you could add, um, oh, there it is. Okay, Abrexis has added it. Excellent. Okay, so there's the link for those of you that would like to go. Okay, and we're going to probably close. When are they starting? In, in a couple of minutes? They've already started, oh, the music has, has begun, okay. it seems, uh, so, but only we're five minutes right, into the so concert. Let's, so. um, let's log out and we'll leave you at the concert, even though you're, even Sounds though great. you're here See you in, there. Sec in Second Life, even though you're here on Wiz IQ. So um, can you bring us back, um, <laughs> Maria, stop the screen sharing so we can come back? There we are. Okay, so... We're all back. I yeah. see there's still 11 people. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you, everybody. Uh, let me just uh, get back in here. Uh, thank you, Maria. Thank you so much for doing a wonderful job with the screen sharing. And uh, yeah. okay, so we're gonna say thank you. Thank you to Kip and Maria for doing uh, an excellent job there, and My Doris pleasure. for being there as well. And not only Doris, but a Brexis, um, lovely dress. Your avatar really liked it. Um, maybe we'll do a fashion show, Doris, uh, sometime during the uh, SL MOOC. 
the fashion mm -hmm. shows are really nice so everybody can get dressed uh something to think about okay <laughs> so maybe at the end we'll do a uh, fashion show everybody will um, find clothes and we'll do that mm -hmm. so thank you thank you <laughs> all right so i'm turning this on things of course and i hope it's going to be better than the first one we did Bye, everybody. See you at the concert. Thank you, Kip. Bye-bye. See you. Bye -bye. See you. You're welcome.